Thank you, Richard. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the, my, own my own perspective of the issue of uh, form over substance, uh, substance over form, or form over substance, uh, is that the issue of substance, we all know, is uh, it's very crucial in uh, Islamic finance. Islamic finance being a financial system that is based on conformity to the principles of the Sharia uh, makes it uh, imperative to observe the spirit of the Sharia in all its ramifications. <coughs> and the Sharia is a system that is based on substance because it is based on, it has some fundamental objectives that are supposed to be achieved through all the actions that have been promulgated in the Sharia, whether, be the, whether they be in the form of worship or in the form of human transactions. Uh, a fundamental maxim of the Sharia is that actions are judged according to intentions. This maxim is applicable in so many matters, both of worship and also of human dealings. Therefore, the issue of substance is central, and the uh, issue of achieving the fundamental obje of objectives of the Sharia is central to any action. And this is always the essence of what uh, the uh, any fatwa seeks to achieve. Any fatwa seeks to achieve conformity to the fulfillment of the fundamental objectives of the Sharia. The form is also important because uh, in the Sharia, forms are regarded to, um, to be, uh, to, uh, uh, substance is embedded in, also in forms. Therefore, you can see in the issue of form and substance in transactions, there can be transactions whereby the form and the substance are both unacceptable in the Sharia. For example, a pers the, the evil tricks of people who have got evil motives, like the trick of uh, robbers to the ploys that are employed by robbers. The ploy itself is not permissible, and also the, 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 the substance and the objective behind the action is not permissible. There could be a, <coughs> a pattern whereby the form is permissible, but the substance uh, the form is not permissible, but the substance is permissible. For example, a person having a loan, or a, a, a person having a right, an obligate a right in the hands of another, and the the person uh, that the right is due on him is denying that right. Then the owner of the action, the owner of the right. He, 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 he takes a ploy, he makes a ploy with two people, two witnesses, to go and be a witness that that right is on the person that is denied. While they have not witnessed the existence of that right, they are just basing their witnessing based on what the owner of the right has told them. So they are actually, their witnessing is actually a false testimony. A false testimony is impermissible, but then he has taken this as a ploy in order to achieve something that is permissible. Or he has two, two uh, he has a loan, he has a loan, he's, he's given out a loan to a person. One loan has been secured, and there is a proof for it. The other one has not been secured, and there is no proof for it. And the one that has been secured and given evidence has been paid back to him. But the other one that has not uh, have that does not have an evidence has not been paid back to him. Then he claims that the one that has been paid he claims that the one that does not have the evidence has uh, the evidence has not been paid to him in order for him to achieve uh, to, to achieve his rightful ownership of the one that the person is being denied. These are this is a, uh, this is where you have a, a form that is not permissible uh, that is not permissible. But the substance of the transaction is permissible because he wants to lay claim to something which is rightfully his. Is, is. That is not permissible in the Sharia, which shows that the form is equally important to the substance. Uh, then you could have a situation where the substance is not permissible, but the form is permissible. Now, this is where a lot of differences of opinion among the scholars come. 
because you have the sometimes the substance it is hidden in the motive of the person you cannot know his motive this is the case of uh, the famous case that is being addressed by the scholars is the case of the what they call the nikahu tahlil the the act of marrying a woman that has been divorced three times from her first husband so that she could be given the chance to go back to the first husband now the marriage itself is permissible you come and contract a true marriage but the aim of the of the second husband is not to achieve the fundamental objective of the sharia in a marriage and it's not to achieve the fundamental objective of the sharia in preventing that kind of marriage his own aim is to make him permissible to the first husband maybe he even has uh, he even convinces himself that what he is doing is actually an act that is recommended because by making her permissible to the first husband he is taking her back to her children he's taking back he is taking her back to her her husband but then he does not realize whether the the objective of the sharia is to prevent that kind of marriage or to make it or to bring it into existence now in such a situation uh, the form even though it is permissible the substance is not permissible and usually the circumstances is what makes the mufti decide whether to make it permissible or to make it non-permissible but in a situation whereby you have both the form and the substance being permissible there is absolutely no doubt about its permissible uh, about its permissibility and this is where you have what the fuqaha call al maharij that is a uh, solutions to to problems or outlets when there is uh, when you create a permissible transaction a complex even if they are com even if it is a complex of a number of transactions in order to achieve an aim that is itself permissible which is what is illustrated by the prophetic hadith that permits the selling of uh, bad dates bad dates fruits with currency and then buying the good dates with the same currency so as to avoid the act of committing riba which is to exchange the uh, the bad dates with good dates on a different measure which has been prohibited by the Quran, by, 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 the, by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is asked to do something which is a complex transaction. It's not a simple transaction because just to exchange bad dates with good dates is a, sim a simple transaction. But then he was asked to enter into contracts that are valid in the Sharia by their form and their substance. Because the first contra contract of selling the date for currency, his aim is to get the currency his aim is to get the money and the aim of the one who sold the who saw uh, who bought it is to get the debts even though it is bad but he wants it because he he because he is uh, a dealer and then with that currency he enters into another transaction either with the same person or with a different with a different uh, seller to buy the good debts based on their on a different transaction now this complex transaction was permissible because the contract itself in form and substance it conforms to the spirit and the fundamental objectives of the sharia now why has this debate become a problem in recent times in recent times we've seen so much uh, agitation regarding certain transactions that do not represent the spirit of the sharia like tawarro like commodity murabaha like sell and <clears throat> lease back of Sukuk in Sukuk structures. Uh, these are actually mimicking conventional interest-based transactions and giving them uh, a, a, a form of Sharia compliance. That is, are they, should we regard this as ploys and tricks, ruses, or should we regard them as maharij, that is, solutions? This usually goes back to the issue of the, uh, this goes back mainly to the role of the Sharia supervisory boards. Because most of them, they fall under the category of the one which is very delicate to establish, either based on the hidden intention of the people who are doing it, or based on the fact that there are different considerations. 
a consideration of benefit in one end and a consideration of uh, disorder and mafsada on another. To balance between the two, it becomes very difficult for the faqih. And in doing so, most, uh, most, uh, most of the Sharia boards, they do things that are actually exception from the general rule, but then their action is made the rule instead of the exception. And therefore, we find uh, the opinions of certain Sharia boards are based as the basis of another Sharia ruling, which should actually not be the case. Uh, and as an outlet for this, as a solution to this, uh, I just wish to conclude by saying what uh, some of the Fuqaha have said, which is uh, Ibn al-Qayyim. He said that using stipulations in contracts is the best solution to avoid falling into evil ploys and evil tricks that are not permissible in the Sharia. Using stipulations in contracts, because with stipulations, you can, uh, many of the forms or the substance of contracts that are found to be non-Sharia compliant can be made Sharia compliant. And he gave some examples, uh, among which is uh, stipulating that uh, what was, what was uh, a position taken by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud when he sold, when he, when he bought a slave girl from his wife, and the wife said, Whenever you intend to sell it, then I have a better right to her with the same price that I sold her to you. And he accepted it, and none of the companions objected to that. Now, this is a better, this is a, a sell that has got embedded in it a stipulation. It is better rather than to, to make multiple transactions. You bring a stipulation that is acceptable by the Sharia. And there are many other examples that the Fukaha have mentioned. So in a sense, the issue of form and substance are both important in Islamic finance. And uh, the most important thing is to realize that the attainment of the fundamental objective of the Sharia as in, in whole or in individual transactions are all equally important. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Bashir. Thank you.